All right, tell me, tell me the people want to listen to us talk no, about no, Tove no, and not listen no. to us talk about these brand new cards. All right, <laughs> All right everyone, welcome Whatever. to the HSK card review. I am Mr. Cero. Uh, today I have with me Auto Aim, I have Teji, and I have Kaishi. What's up, guys? Hey, Hello. how's it going? Hi. So, we're going to start with the Forest Craft cards for sure first. You guys want to start with the Bronze or the Legendaries? Uh, let's start with the bronze. Start with the bronzes. All right. Yeah. So the first bronze is fairy refuge. So we're gonna start with utopian fairy. <laughs> so utopian. Are we just utopian fairy. this card? What does this card do? <laughs> we're not skipping it. We're just gonna go to it next. <laughs> so, all right. All right. So we got so utopian fairy is a two play point two two, and its effect is fanfare and enhance five. You have an allied follower, plus one, plus two, and then restore three defense to your leader. So... I can't imagine Forest has room for this card. Th there are so many really, really good two-mana tutus Forest already has access to, and I feel like this is just kind of sad compared to Aaron. That's how I see this. It's just like a sad Aaron. Well, even if you compare it to the current two-mana tutus, like Rain and um, the other one. The other gold one. Paula? This thing is just so much better. Yeah, Paula. Even against Fairy Dragon, this thing is just not Wait. great. Yeah, it, yeah. It, I like that it gains you HP, but... I mean, that's cool. Maybe, maybe in some, like, crazy alternate universe, like, aggro dominates the meta and this becomes a thing, but you already have a lot of brambles. I don't think you ever need this. Yep. I'm Black... gonna just go to the next card. Black Soul in chat saying Leaf Man is better, too. Probably is. Um, every every two drop is better. So we got we'll go to Fairy Refuge next. Fairy Refuge is one play point amulet. If at least two other or rather one play point amulet count down to at the end of your turn, put a fairy circle into your hand. So it's like um fire sprite grow. And then it has if at least two other cards are played this turn, and you have at least one play point, choose play this as either Fairy's Yawn or Fairy's Awakening. So Fairy's Yawn is count down to at the end of your turn select a random enemy follower and it can't attack next turn so it's like well what's it called wood of dreams forest, forest of dreams forest of dreams that's like forest of dreams at one play point right yeah and then the other one is fairy's awakening count down to during your opponent's turn whenever an enemy follower attacks your leader deal one damage to that follower so this is like what's the name of that card man eating mangrove right yeah, yeah. Uh, so it seems a little more interesting than the last card, but again, I'm going to have to go with, where, where are you going to fit this in? I mean, Forest has a lot of good cards right now. Yeah, this We're going to get to some more of them. This card is super flexible, though. I mean... For, for one play point, you're getting three somewhat relevant effects. It's flexible, but, like, I just don't know that I wanted to put slots in my deck to it. Yeah, and I don't. I, I don't see Forest playing much differently than it does currently with the new cards. So I, and I just think that you don't fit these control these kind of elements in there. All right. When brambles exist is what I mean. Go to uh, Double Flower. Uh, by the way, hello, uh, Azure. Now joining us. Azure's in the call now. Yes. Og champ, what's up, Azure? How's it going? Yep. Going all right. So, you guys already review Carla. We have not. No, we no. started with the bronzes. Yeah, we did it just for you. We started with the bronzes all so right. that you can you can make it for the waifus. Right. So we're up to Devil Flower right now. So Devil Flower is a two play point two one in Forest. Fanfare: Destroy an enemy amulet if at least two other cards are played this turn. So it took a very long time, but we finally have a way to remove Acceleradium from the field. Yeah, but they also they also printed Seraphic Blade in the same expansion. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if this is better than Seraphic Blade. To me, this is like a cheap way to remove Tanko Shrine, and that's about it. Um, it's good against so Tempers. That's all in mirror. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, so this is, I think, better than the other bronzes we've seen so far, but I would again... I play this card over Seraphic in Forest, right? Probably true, yes. Uh, I'm not sure if this 
is something you can make space for, but it's definitely something to try out, I'd say. It gets meta dependent, of course. Yeah. I think if uh, Tinko is definitely is like tier one, you definitely play this card. Yeah, if if there are more amulets that are worth targeting, this card is pretty pretty solid. You can balance it, destroy more amulets too, if it gets down to that. Uh, the logic of Tinko being tier one would mean that it can deal with this anyways. So I don't I don't agree with that. Yeah, I'm just saying like if, if... in order to be a, a tier one deck, you have to be able to deal with everything. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I'm You're just right. I'm just saying if like uh amulets become oppressive at some point, this becomes pretty reasonable way to deal with them. Yeah, I think that's that's a reasonable statement. Um, so uh, th there's there's a chance this finds space, but it's gonna depend on how the meta shakes out. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going too far out of my way to put a two play point two one into my deck unless I'm really getting use out of its effect. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so my Conid. I think this card's got sweet art. I don't know what you guys think about this one. This is a three mana, two three mushroom thingy, and it's got an ambush. So yeah, I mean we've Shad seen this card before. Yeah, Shadowcat has this exact same card, right? I forget the name of it, but Tenacious Ghost. Yeah, that one. That's just three mana, two three with ambush, right? That but wasn't a good card. Yeah. Maybe this is a little bit better in a class with Wood of Brambles, or not Wood of, not Wood of Brambles, in a class with Elf Song, or in a class with a viable aggro archetype. Yeah, I can't see point. this. I can't see this ever making the cut in mid forest. If there's like, you know, if aggro forest is is the best forest, then maybe. But like, this is a really all in card because it's just like oh, I just want to get my face damage, and I don't care about anything else. So. It doesn't really speak to how Forest operates a lot of the time. I kind of want to skip a little bit ahead, but didn't Haven get a very similar card? Uh, Shy Al Mirage? Isn't that also uh, a 3 play Al point? Mirage. That's um, a 3 I play point so. two three with Ambush, right? I think it only gets Ambush on the Enhance, but we'll get to that card later. The Agro Forest is so good right now, it loses very, very little. You lose Beetle Warrior, which kind of sucks, but this can slot in for that guaranteed damage spot. Oh, Akka's right. Akka says he wants to mention that this card has feet. I didn't even oh notice goodness. that. It does have feet. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, uh, but uh, you bring up a good point, though. They are losing... Mm -hmm. Agroforest is looting, losing Beetle Warrior, and this is a little bit... You're a little bit happier playing this on 3 than Beetle Warrior, right? Yeah, so... Yeah. Teji made the comment about this being the, or the, being the exact same card that Shadow has, and the difference being that Forest has viable aggro and shadow. <laughs> That's true. All right, so depends if aggro forest like if aggro forest has space, you can put this in. It just lost a card, so it does have space. It's such a boring card. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not that exciting. So the next one is pretty interesting. This is a four play point four three, Sutera of the Sacred Bow. Fanfare, draw a card, and then whenever this follower attacks, deal one damage to all enemy followers. I thought the first time I read this, it had class draw a card, not fanfare draw a card. That's the other uh, one. The other one. All right, so yeah, when this was first revealed, we were like, I think everyone had the same reaction. Oh, sweet, a playable four drop for Forest. And then they revealed the other four drop for Forest, and I think people kind of lost interest in this one. Yeah, I find it really <laughs> funny that they made that they revealed the other one and they power crept this one before it even came out. Yeah. I feel like the other one is so much better. So let's uh, take a look at that other one. It's a solid tech card, though. Yeah, yeah. If Agro Forest becomes a big deck, this is very strong against Agro Forest. It comes down before the Leaf Man turn, can wipe away a Bramble's board. Like before yeah. taking the damage. This is Matera. That's. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that, that Sutera is bad, but like I said, I think mid four slots are pretty crowded. If you can find space for like two four drop evolve effects in your deck, I mean, you know, I don't know what you cut, but good on you. I I think fanfare draw a card is probably better than clash draw a card though, right? In most situations. Clash has the ability to draw more than one, but also has the ability to be removed by spells and not draw any. So and because it's an X to Free. It can be removed by like airbound barrage, airbound barrage, 
pocket knuckles substitution. Yeah. And then since Fine. it is fanfare, you can like play it, bounce it, play it again if you really wanted to. That's super cute. So yeah, she is after, cute. after that we got Witherwood Guardian. What do you think about this one? Five play point three six ward. Whenever this follower attacks or defense is increased by a speller effect, deal one damage to a random enemy follower. Isn't this card <laughs> just a bigger version of uh oh what's her name? Like Novice Adept archer, archer or Adept Archer, yeah. She shoots like a novice archer, she can barely land a shot. But <laughs> I'm not I'm not very excited for this. This is no, just I a more expensive word, version of that, right? I think it's the word random on this card. card is just uh, unattractive. It's also just like a so five mana is such a big investment for a card that you need to be casting other spells on. Yeah. Yeah. It's five mana. It's a three six, which is not terrible stats, but they're kind of awkward stats. I yeah, don't, I don't mind a three six at all. A three six with wards is pretty reasonable, but like, what am I supposed but to do with that other effect? In meta. <laughs> yeah, I I think if we end up being in the meta where people are putting cards in their decks just because they say ward on them, then maybe this will see play. But That's true. we haven't seen that up to this point in any of the rotation metas. Um, not since like TOTG meta. Yeah. If you just want like a well statted ward, wouldn't you just play a lion champion? Probably. Yeah, lion champion costs yeah. one more. You're also correct. This is just a better overall card. It's like 20 times better against Iagro. Like, this, yeah. this is the closest we got to Aaron right now, right? Let that um, sink in for a little bit. <laughs> even then. Uh, Lion Champion is closer to Aaron. <laughs> Lion Champion's yeah. closer to Aaron. Yeah, I don't know. This card isn't like that crazy. Let's go to the next one. Yeah. All right, this one is pretty hype. Owl Bear. I want all. No, this card sucks. Let's move on. Really? Yeah, this card like, is actually all strong. right. Now, eight mana, six six ambush is definitely not good. But have you seen its art? <laughs> I mean, I've been I've been messed up by more than a couple Owl Bears in my Dungeons and Dragons career. But that doesn't mean that I want to play them in Shadowverse. And I hear owl bears and D and D are breasted. Dude, they yeah they are. We can talk about this later. <laughs> owl bears are OP. Bug bears too. Bug bears are the real nasty guys. Jeez. That's so, crazy okay. still. Whenever this card is just this card's boring too. This it's, does not do justice to the owl bears. It's nice honestly. art, but it's so boring. Yeah, the best part about this card is its art, in my opinion. Everything else yeah. is trash. Yeah, not playable. Take two, this card's gonna kill you. Well, yeah, that's true. It's probably good in take two. So, what about Shamu and Shaman Noblekin? Okay, let's look at the the things. All right. So first off, we got three play point two three, and then fanfare. You choose either a Shamu's antics or a Shamu's gaze. Shamu's antics is a two play point spell with <clears throat> deal two damage to an enemy follower and then restore two defense to your leader. So vampiric kiss. And then Shama's gaze is. Give an enemy follower minus X minus O until the end of the turn. X equals the number of cards in your hand. Uh, until the end of your opponent's turn, right? Until the end yeah. of your opponent's turn, yes. Yeah. So I think this card is good. It's like, stun your opponent's card or whatever. It gives um, you two pretty reasonable removal spells, right? So, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will you ever take the minus X? No, if they cost one, I would sometimes. No, they cost two. Is I feel like there's going to be. I feel like there's going to be an occasional time where you're like, I guess the minus X would be helpful here. I don't and think so. So it your your very, opponent goes like, tempo very, Venus or something like that, and just doesn't evolve it because why not? And then you can like get the gaze and then target it and just time walk them for a turn and go face with everything, but it's not really that great. It just I feel like that spell is more to just <clears throat> turn something off for a turn just so you can push face damage. I feel like that yeah. spell needed to cost one mana. So it's not a real choose card. Yeah. Yeah. It's just I think the the gaze card is so situational. Yeah. You like, might want um, it sometimes if you have some crazy idea. It's something that you will play play and get at some point, but you never know exactly when you're going to get it. Yeah. But it's also a three mana two three, which is very good stats with and it a removal spell. And it doesn't cost you a it. card. And 
I think it's it could see play in mid range of your control archetypes. And there's two cute cards or two cute characters on. Yeah, it. yeah, very cute. So you know, you should we should put three in every deck, but uh, more realistically, we're gonna have to find space for it too. I think with um since the new expansion Forest lost Aaron and Elf Queen, and I think they lost one of their heal card. I'm not positive about that, but they did lose a good amount of heal this expansion. So the Shamu's antics at least gives them a way to recoup on the heal that they lost. Yeah, so possible, but we'll see. Alright, so this is the card that Power Crept the card we were talking about just a few moments ago. This is Matera yeah. Peerless Shot, 4 play point four three, with instead of Fanfare draw a card, it's got Clash draw a card, and then Evolve. Deal X damage to an enemy follower, X equals the number of cards in your hand, then Clash draw a card. Yeah, so I was on the receiving end of this a couple in a couple of Cockatrice games with Akamaru, and this card is busted. So annoying. Just like one shots anything, because like you're playing forest. Come on, man. How many cards? Like you never run I mean, out of cards in your hand. Yeah, in the Not on turn four. You usually yeah, have like five or six. Yeah, realistically have five. If you have more than that, that means you play a lot of fairy generators and have that kind of a weak board. Right. But if five damage isn't killing something on turn four, then you know you're pretty far behind. I don't know what's happening. Um, five damage plus this evoing into it. There's nothing that can survive that. Well, I, I mean, I'm more thinking of you deal five damage to something, and then this evils over something else, and you draw a card. Yeah, because five damage, I guess you could say, all right, that might not be able to kill, like, actually, no, there's nothing, really. Yeah, Clear not on turn things. four. Clear two things and draw a card. Draw a card. What can go wrong? It's a good card. Put it in your deck. Yeah, this thing is a good card. And it's a waifu. Yes, true. All right, so it seems like we agree. Pretty good card. Aka has a good point in chat. He says it clears Abomination. Oh, yeah. That card's Which a pain is in the butt. Big. All right, <clears throat> so we got God Hunter Selwyn. This is the craziest Sylvan Justice in the universe. This is 5 play point three five. Accelerate 2, deal 2 damage to an enemy follower. So Accelerate 2, Sylvan Justice without the fairy. Not bad. And then he's got... Uh... Wait, that is not great. It's not terrible, right? You'd rather play that than some other garbage in your deck. I feel. I like. mean, it's strictly worse than Sylvan, but... Yeah. If, if that's the better of the two modes, I'm not playing it. Yeah, well, I don't... I think what makes this card... What sets this card apart is just its flexibility. So it's got three... Uh, It's got Ward on a 5 play point, 3-5. And then Fanfare. Deal 4 damage to an enemy follower if at least two cards are played this turn. Then deal two damage to all enemy followers. At least four other cards are played this turn. So realistically, this card's a seven drop. Yeah, most likely. Realistically, yeah. this card's a six drop. Well, realistically, this card is a two drop if you want to just remove something cheaply. It's a because uh, you play Venus on five, you play Fairy plus uh, zero cost, and then you sell one for four. And that would be nice if I got the entire curve. You could also play Arya and get this thing off on five. Uh, or Flower of Why are you playing Arya instead of the four drop? Yeah. So that you can I don't know about this card. I'm not super excited, but I would be willing to give it a shot. I it's... think it's going to be better than we think it is, but it's not I going to be better. I think it's good. I, th I think Sylvan Justice is pretty reasonable. I think the ward is pretty reasonable. And I think the ability to just nuke a board is pretty reasonable. I feel like all the effects are reasonable and none of them are just that insane by themselves. Right, I think Forest is like line. way overloaded with anti-aggro tools and it annoys me. Right, take that last line off a card because that, car that card's basically never going to happen. If, you know, yeah. if the four cards are cast? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty hard to cast five cards in a turn. Fairy, 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 God Hunter Selwyn. I mean, right, so yeah. five board spaces. I mean, with with the other new legendary, it gets a little easier, but you, you can do like wisp, 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 wisp. I think most most of the time you're playing it for the uh, deal four, deal four, and get a three five. Yeah, that's the idea is that you want to be able to not use an Evo. Kind of like a Hector. Yeah. Then it does have. Three fives is also not great stats. It's, it's not that small though, and if you evolve it like a five seven, that's pretty beefy. They have to evolve something into that. But you don't want to use an evil on this card. You Probably have a lot not. of cards in, like 
forest now that want evos. Yeah, it's interesting. We'll have to we'll have to see it. I'm not too crazy about it, but I think it's definitely an interesting card. So we have Coral. That's already six cards you are probably playing that require an Evo. Alright, Coral is a cutie, so we should put her in our deck. Yeah, and this card Coral is... A cutie deck. Selwyn is also fighting for the same board slot, I feel like. Or deck slot is Coral, yeah. since they're both five drops. So yeah, Coral is... Selwyn never has Coral's wages. I don't think Selwyn's a five drop. I think he's like super flexible, but he just says five on him. Yeah... Oh yeah, no, no, you never play him on turn five. You're right. Like, realistically, you always want Venus on five, right? The, the only time you want to play, uh, okay, what? The only time you want to play someone on five is if you already have like a whisper two in your hand. But yeah, so Korwa is five play point four four fanfare. Give your leader the following effect: at the start of your turn, put a fill into your hand. Put two fills into your hand instead if you're if at least four damage was dealt to your leader during the opponent's previous turn. And then Fanfare Enhance 8, you put 3 fills into your hand, and then you recover 3 play points. So it's Enhance 8, put 3 fills into your hand, and it's like you never enhanced it for 8 at all. You know, I, I'm surprised I didn't just like slap Ward on this card. It seems like I could just slap and Ward on everything in this expansion, but regardless. Um, so, uh, it's a good card. I think... um, that it works really well with Fida to draw you a bunch of cards. I think um, Phil is just, like, good in fours just because it's a way to spend play points without filling up your board. Way to keep your hand fill full. Yeah, and then sort of, like, it sets you up for a really powerful late game where your opponent has to, like, basically keep your board clear all the time, and then they're, they still have to be scared of uh, uh, Jungle Wardens. Or, Jungle no, Warden sorry, rotated out. White Venara, White Venara, that's what I meant. Uh, white, you know, you can go face with 10 for White Venara. You know, once you get your fills stacked up. So I think it's it's pretty powerful. I, I was actually not like crazy about this card and then I, I played against it a little bit. And I was like, huh, you know, that card gives Forrest a clock. Yeah, Rias made a good point of it keeps your hand full for Casio, which is pretty big. Yes, that that was also something that I noticed. But if they do deal four damage to you after you play this. You'll oftentimes have like a, that full nine card hand from the Casio turn. Like, yeah. I mean, the four damage thing is like, might, might proc like, you know, once or twice, but even without that, it's good. It's something they have to keep track of. Yeah. If I have six cards in my hand, hmm. do I want to deal four or do I only deal three to them and deny that fill? It can actually save you. It gives the same kind of uh, decision making that Barbarossa sort of did, where your opponent doesn't always want to take the most obvious play just because it might hurt them in the long run. Yep, I think it's just a good card. Yeah. It makes your opponent have to think. That's a bad thing. Bad thing for them. So let's go to. The next class. So we saw we let's actually just talk about Forest Craft as a whole before we go on to the next class. So what do you think about these cards that Forest got? Just in well, general. They got Corolla, which is probably the best waifu of the set, so easy best class. Yeah. I think Yeah, I think they got a lot of really strong cards. And I think they're looking at a uh, mid rangey archetype or a control archetype with what they've printed. So yeah. who knows if we're gonna see that over so aggro. I'm I'm looking at Shamu and Shama again, and I'm kind of thinking, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Dragon Cleaver Roy and the and Vols. They're both three play point two twos. This one's a three play point two three, obviously, and then it gives you an option between two different spells, one being the one you're probably gonna be taking more often than the other. No, honestly, I think that they're trying to figure out how can we make this better like this mid-range force deck better without making it blatantly overpowered so they're giving a lot of cards that are good but not great because they lost two of their best cards in Aaron and Chongo Warden maybe you also have to remember this is a class that spells Wood of Brambles so it's always going to be relevant but yeah as long as they have three Wood of Brambles and 
something out of Star, Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. and Airborne Barrages. Yeah, they're, they're looking pretty good. I don't think that there's... Yeah. Worst case <laughs> scenario, you start playing Paula to bounce or whatever ambles. I don't Maybe think more. there's much chance that Forest is not uh, it's somewhere in the meta. Only... Agro Forest is also still just good enough that you... Like, they didn't need to print any new Agro Forest cards. It lost a card. Yeah, and that card it... was like one of the worst cards in the deck. And it got back Myconid, which is fine. Yep. A card that works better with Elf Song, which is what you want to be doing with Agro Forest. Okay, so let's go to Grand Auction. Grand Auction is a sword card. It's a spell, bronze. Discard a card from your hand, draw a card. And then you put a Age 1 <laughs> weaponry into your hand. Uh, I think I'd like the card better if it didn't put an Age 1 weaponry into my hand. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, I'm not a fan, like, I'm not a fan of just cards that just rummage, like, oh, okay, uh. There's, there's no benefit in, to discarding a card from your hand at the moment. And no. if age-worn it's... weaponry is, if drawing an age-worn weaponry is your payoff, so I, th I thought the card did something a little bit different the first time I read age-worn weaponry, and I thought it was alright, and then I was really underimpressed with once I realized what the card actually did. So, I don't know, I feel like you're going a bit out of your way for some lackluster value. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not super thrilled with this card, so... But I mean, Sword card has good options, I don't think we need it. This is like the new Mentor's teachings. <laughs> uh, no. I'd rather have Mentor's teaching it just cycles instead of loot. This isn't even loot, this is rummage. Yeah. All right, we'll go to the next one. Um, we're, we got Tycoon. Two play point two two. Fanfare enhance seven. Gain three plus three, so it becomes a five five. And then draw cards until there are five cards in your hand. This isn't bad hand refill. Right. It's also command. I think it's a take two card. Yeah, it's two. Enhance seven is a lot of mana. I there? I don't so want that art. But competes with like I... your Arthur turn. Plus, it can be pulled from Arthur, which you don't want. Pull vanilla two two with that. It's bad. I I don't want this art in my deck just in general. Also I that. I don't want this art in the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll go to the next one. Oh. Tycoon probably a little unimpressive. Maybe I feel I feel like there's a possibility it can make its way as like a one or a two of just in a deck that might be interested in the refill. But unlikely. No. Yeah, unlikely. I think is a good way to put it. Um, so 3 play point three one Tanya, Shadow Enforcer, Ambush Bane. That's it. I, I oh, see yeah. this card, and I read 3 play, play point three one Ambush. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'll play an aggro sword. Yeah, You're gonna twist my arm. It goes, it goes face. Aggro. Good size. Yeah. Yes. Not a bad card. It's um, just really simple. Yeah. It just... It, it goes it goes in any deck that's interested just in the ambush. That's really boring. Yeah. Uh Princess Tina. Four play point three three. At the end of your turn, put a random one play point swordcraft follower from your deck into play. So this card so immediately bad. reminds me of uh White Queen Hamera, but significantly worse. It doesn't have rush. Put something into play end of turn, so you can't even evo that thing to hit in. The worst yeah. part about this card is that you have to play one drops in your deck, which means you can't play Arthur, because then your Arthur kind of sucks. I mean, you probably still play Arthur in a deck so with one you drops. You can. If you want some Pompous Princess as well. Yeah, I don't. I'm not super psyched about this. Like, maybe an Aggro Sword, but you want to be running Quick Blader, and this is like horrible if it pulls Quick Blader. Yeah, and then. So... What one drop do you really want to pull? Like, even if you play That's Perseus, you can't awkward. evolve the Perseus. <laughs> the I, only decent one is Perseus. You can't even evolve uh, the Perseus. Ninja trainee, but that isn't even in rotation. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not high on this card. Let's I, move on. I don't think it's very good. Cell Sword Lucius. One play point one one. Fanfare enhance five. Destroy an enemy follower. I like that I it's know. a one-drop that you can play later, and it's not actually a dead draw later in the game. But you have to play this in your deck, is the cost of it. Yeah, that's and kind that's of the, kind of the problem. Really high cost. You're going to be drawing Spell Sword Lucius's when you just don't want them. Like, 
if wards are popular, like if you pl if aggro sword's good and like wards are a, a big thing, then like maybe this makes it into aggro sword as like a oh it's a one drop and then sometimes you know it's just dance of, like a crappy dance of death. I think if you're just looking I for think my removal spells haven't been meta for a long time though. We also just don't get too many five play point removal spells, and the ones that we get aren't particularly good. I wouldn't want to play them. Yeah. No. I think in a deck that's just interested in curving out, they might be interested in this card just because it helps them get there, and it's also just a removal spell for something that might need to be removed later in the game. But other than that, it's a little unimpressive. Yep. Age worn we weaponry. Two play point, countdown to amulet. At the end of your opponent's turn, summon a knight. And then if an allied swordcraft follower is in play and you have at least two play points, you can play it as either a great shield or a great sword. The great shield is fanfare give an allied swordcraft follower plus zero plus one and then last word summon a shield guardian so that is a one one with ward right yeah yes. uh both of these options are trash like i think the base one, form is the best one it is the best one but, but you have to have nothing in play it makes so it really awkward to play an aggro yeah. turn two if you've missed your one drop the first yeah. the first time i read this card i thought you got them all at the end of your opponent's turn. So I thought that they were all like pretty reasonable, but that's just not how it works. Yeah. I just don't think it gets there. Yeah. It's a pack filler card. Nice art. Yeah. I, I like the art on it. Yeah, the art is pretty nice. Charletta, Tiny Justice. Three play point two three, Swordcraft Silver Commander with Ward. So this is doing its Romeo impression. And then it's got evolve. All allied followers can't be damaged by spells and effects until your opponent's turn. Your opponent's turn. So this is actually, I think, this is a pretty reasonable pull off of a round tables, right? Well, she's a cutie. Yeah, that's the most important part of this card. Yes. Right, after that, I think this card can see play if it's a meta that has a lot of like effect damage in it. But outside of that, not really. It's a tech card. Yeah, if you, if you don't really have a lot of effect damage, then Black Queen is enough. Yeah, that's the problem. Is like Sword already has this effect in like already what what is definitely a good card in Chromatic so, Duel, and you don't have to evolve it. Man, maybe the uh, like a two three ward, you know, maybe the Grimnir stat line is is relevant, but we'll see. Yeah, the Grimnir stat line is never a particularly bad stat line. I feel like. Yeah. It's not bad, but, you know, again, do you have room? Is the big question. Maybe not. Um. So, die. Secret Agent. 4 play point one, one. That sounds kind of underwhelming, but it's got Ambush. And then Fanfare. Put either Ivern, Novice Agent, or an Infiltration into your hand. So, Ivern, Novice Agent is a 0 play point two two with Storm. And, wait, no. It gets Storm no, on Evolve. Have... It gets Storm on yeah, Evolve. It's... I originally read it as, oh, this is just basically a novice trooper. Wait, but so you did it. cheat in that game? No, but the way the way that it was written on the card yesterday when we played, it actually did say Storm on the unevolved right, side, right, so it right, must right, have just right, been right. written wrong. Yeah. So Cesaro's a dirty cheater is what we're learning. Yes. I, I lost the game anyway, man. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> <laughs> so 0 play so. point two two with Storm becomes a 2-4. When you evolve it, so it's asking if you're evolved, and it's not really getting too much other than the two damage to an enemy follower, which is nice. Or then, uh, yeah. the crash. then all you... I'm seeing on this card is thigh highs and cat ears, <laughs> and that's what that's my life. I mean, she's she's cute, but that's about it. So I think I think infiltration is actually pretty strong. I think this is the strongest part of the card. Draw until you have X cards in your hand. X equals the number of cards in your opponent's hand. This is um, but the problem is to play infiltration. It costs you six mana to play this card. Yeah, it's very expensive. I'd rather just play infiltration in my deck and not have to deal with the secret agent. Except infiltration is a token. Yeah. The thing the thing about like infiltration is this card, like with that text on it, draw until you have equal cards to your opponent's hand. When that's put on a cheap card, that usually gets like banned or restricted in a lot of card games. But you're going through a lot of hoops to get this because you're paying four play points for a one-one. It costs six, and yeah. you get a one-one ambush. You don't, you don't want that. It. 
it's not worth it. Especially in, I presume you want this in an aggressive sword deck, and I don't want to spend my turn four on a one one in an aggressive sword deck. Yeah, that's a shame. Couple yeah. few cards on this, but they're all bad cards. Okay, so dra yeah, bad cards. What do you guys think about Dragon Knights? This card has got so many different effects. This is a pretty sweet card. This is a pretty sweet card. All right, it's so a five mana three three storm. So it's five mana. You can get either Vein Indomitable Knight, which is a two five, with at the end of your turn it gets plus one attack and you restore three defense to the follower. So it's pretty beefy. It heals itself a bunch and it'll keep trading over things until it gets removed because it gets to keep healing. Lancelot, which is a three three storm. And then whenever you have an allied Vein Indomitable Knight, it gets the buff, so that's nice. We have Siegfried, which is a 5-mana five 5-4 five with Bane and Ward. Just kind of clean stats. Pretty defensive card that can also deal with some big things. And the last one is Perceval, Lord of Flames, 5-play point, 5-4. Five gain Rush when an allied Siegfried, Dragon Slayer is in play. Whenever this attacks, gain plus X plus O, where X is the number of allied followers in play. This is the second gayest card in the set. <laughs> it's a bold card. I like it. It's a good card. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's probably going to be a good card, but I think it's a good card. The the only a lot of husbandos on this card. The only thing about this card is none of them have rush by themselves, other than Perceval. But Perceval needs Siegfried in play, so I feel yeah, like. But, they can <laughs> On five, you have an evil point available to you. So you're either playing the storm and going face, or you're, you know, you play one of the other ones and evolve it. Yeah. On eight, you do have the option of getting rush. You also have the option of more storm damage. The only card that might be possibly gay is human fear and attack. I'm going to say. This card is very flexible. You can't <laughs> take that away from Dragon Knights. I think it'll be played. But yeah, it's probably going to be played because... Especially because we lost, what, Luminous Mage? We lost Luminous Lu Mage and Gawain. And Barbarossa, or not Barbarossa. Um, and which were two of your... Support yeah. Cannon. Support Cannon. Five. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure this will be played. Yeah, yeah it's just a huge... <clears throat> I think it makes the like, cut. I think it makes the cut pretty easily. Uh, so, all right. <clears throat> Zeta, Crimson uh, Lancer, yeah. the new Geno. So 6 play point six five Rush. Whenever this follower attacks, put a Beatrix Undying Blue into your hand if there is no Beatrix Undying Blue already in your hand. And Beatrix four is a 4 play point 4 1 with Storm. 4 2, I think. 4 play point 4 2 four. with Storm. And then if you enhance it on 10, it gets the ability to ignore a ward and then you recover 6 play points. Yep, yeah, this is just a pretty solid rush card, I think. Does the same thing Jinder did. Play because the sword needs something that's kind of an Evo point now. This is pretty close to it. I think yeah, it gives you some reach. It's big rush that gives you big storm. I think it's pretty reasonable. That's a good card. So, what do you think of the artwork, Ted Jason? Oh, we'll talk later. <laughs> All right, so we got Lefam Honorable Knight. Accelerate to summon two knights. Otherwise, you can pay eight play points for an eight seven. With fanfare, give your leader the following effects: Whenever an allied follower attacks and there is no allied knights in play, summon a knight. Whenever an allied follower that originally cost one play point or less comes into play, give it storm. So, if you're able to get his eight play point effect off, good for you. If you're able to get his eight point effect off without dying, even more impressive. All I'm saying is that this is a two drop that yeah. doesn't get pulled by Arthur. That's what it's meant to be. It's a two drop that isn't meant to be pulled by Arthur. But yeah. if you top deck it late in the game, great. You now have a big body you can play that's a legitimate threat. Yeah, they have to deal with the eight seven if they can't. If uh, if you do get it down, that's gonna threaten to hit for a lot of damage if it doesn't. Yes, I think it's playable, but it's it's not amazing, but it's yeah. not terrible. I am very disappointed that Lathama's mouth is closed in this art. 
the floor of this card is going to be Oathless Knight. Yeah, Oathless Knight isn't a terrible card, I don't think. I think it's good in a deck interested in going wide. Because that's all that it is. It's just Oathless Knight. But this is Oathless Knight plus Latham. It's a little better. If I can't get a Anyways, I think that's all I have to say about that guy. So what do you guys think about Swordcraft overall? I think Sword is going to stay good. Yeah, I think in general, it kept a lot of stuff that makes its mid-range archetype good. Losing Gawain and Luminous Mage kind of hurt, but um, that's not the biggest reason. Philosophy. I think Aggro Sword is going to be a threat. You think so? They got a 3-1 on turn 3-1 th Ambush on turn 3. They got uh, Zeta, they got Oathless Knight, they got Arthur, or sorry, they got like little mini Albert with Dragon Knights. I think Aggro Sword has a chance of being playable, but I think it's still going to be mid sword. All right. As Sword deck, just watch out for it. It's going to remain top dog. Mid sword has Arthur and Sky Fortress. Those, are, yep. those are two pretty strong cards. <laughs> <laughs> like what else does your deck need just win with those cards I think it, I think it's nice that they have access to even more late game now if they do decide to play Dragon Knights they can just enhance that and have more late game than they ever had yes are the are the Dragon Knights commanders weird. they're all officers oh no uh, Vayne is an officer Siegfried is an officer Lancelot is a commander and Perceval is a commander that's something you're gonna have to keep in mind so yeah, they're, they're pairs of officer and commander, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Definitely something to remember. But Is there anything see. else in Sword right now that utilizes the officer commander's energy? Well, Sky Fortress. Oh, okay, Sky Fortress. Um, yeah, that's all you need. I was going to say Luminous Mage, but that's going away. Same for Support Cannon, it's going away. All right, Runecraft, time for me to take a break while someone else does these. All right, so Fatan's coming back. That's sweet, right? I think. I think... Yeah, I think that's pretty good. All right, are you still there, Tudge? You need to tell me if this art's better than the original. Fatan? Oh, yeah. that's a good question, actually. Mm. I, th I think it is. I, I think, think this it's art's better. That's Wait, gonna be hard though. But in the original, I like it the has original. like a goofy skeleton-looking thing on the card. I loved that. It was a classic, you know. Okay. It was see, like one of those artworks you would see on Google Images or something. It was great. As we have the art, lo the artwork loaded up from Google Images on the screen as we speak. Yeah. Well, just imagine yeah, this card. Just... I think the swirl that's the coming goofy off. little skeleton in her in on the card in her hand. There's a skeleton <laughs> in her hand. Yeah. So like she's holding up two cards, right? Uh huh. <laughs> And then Wait. she's holding two cards in the other hand. I see the skeleton, like, on her hair hood thing, but I don't see one in her hand. Isn't it on the back of the card? Might be what you're talking about. You're talking in the about. original image, yeah. you're, you might have you to want... zoom. This is a point that <laughs> the new one does show thigh, which is important. That's true. I like them both. It's like a goofy little image that you would find some, like... Uh, create your own card thing. <laughs> I loved that. I think Face Hand is. You can zoom on your Google Chrome. He doesn't know how to do that. I do. Uh, Just okay. more, more work than I want to put into it at this point. All right, let's uh <laughs> let's move to the next card. I mean, Face Hand is gonna be good. We lose Giant Chimera though, right? No, we keep Giant Chimera. No, we lose regular no, we Chimera. Not. We right. lose regular Chimera. We lose regular Chimera, but we get Despacito Chimera. I don't think about RuneCraft. Why? Because I don't want to think about RuneCraft. Right. I think RuneCraft is going to be good. So we yeah, got, I know. We got Grand Spire. I think this card's sweet. Uh, Two mana, deal two damage I to an know. enemy follower. Earthrite, deal four damage to an enemy follower instead, and then deal four, one damage to the enemy leader. Is this what you want to be doing with your Earthrite? This is what I want to do every single day. Just do some damage to my opponent's stuff, and then also do some damage to their face. I have a question. Yes. Would you play this card in non-Earthright? Probably. No. If there's enough no, things with 2 HP... Play Seraphic Blade. If there's enough things with 2 HP, maybe. I don't know. 
Because Seraphic, this thing can actually do two damage to like a four drop. That's at, that's like a four two, right? Seraphic Blade can't do anything against the four two. Yeah, but between Windblast, Seraphic Blade, and Absolute Zero Blade, like I think you got enough. You probably Empire have enough, Brace. but sometimes you just don't have enough. I would be interested. I've always been interested, and it doesn't seem like it's going to be possible this time around either. But of just like a regular spell boost rune list that also just gets the splash. A little bit of earth rights for like Levi and like maybe Grand Spire buff concentrations. I mean, they, can. they can. They can. They just don't do it too much. I did. It's generally just must oh. But I think a lot of it allows you to do that, right? I like that you can earth right and then do four damage to something too. That's nice. You don't have the choice though, is the problem. The only problem is. You lost for Dirt Rune, Halo Golem. You lost Magic Illusionist, and you lost Major Nightfall, which are three of the most important cards in the deck. Yeah, I think I think um, Earth Rune is going to be like turning into more of a controlly list now moving forward. I don't think it has the resources to do that. Gonna, so. oh. We'll have to see how it goes. Eat X pass. Um, any other things to say about Grand Spire before we move on? Um. It's just not an exciting card. Not an exciting card. I'm excited by two mana removal spells, but I guess I'm a simple person. <laughs> we knew that much. So I just lost. <laughs> we just lost the best two mana removal. So Black That's Witch awesome. Anna, two play point two one. Last words: deal one damage to a random enemy follower, or last words: if you evolve it, deal three damage to a random enemy follower. So this is like. Bellinus in Runecraft, but it dies to a Bellinus. <laughs> yeah, this card is terrible. Come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know if I'd say this is terrible. Like, Bellinus is a good card. This is just the worst Bellinus, but. I've always liked the idea of mid range rune. Yeah. I think that this. I don't know if there's going to be a deck for it, though. I if just, I were ever to play Runecraft, it would be mid-range Runecraft. You you get access to the the new legendary. She just refills. Yes. The new legendary. I feel like that is just more of a aggro rune card. You just dump yeah. your hand every single turn. Yeah. Is that not like something? This a card you would play in that? Maybe. Maybe yeah. The problem. Probably is just because there isn't any two drops. So this is generally going to be. This is almost always going to be worse than Bellinus, but there's going to be the few times we're evolving. It's going to be pretty relevant, right? Yeah. I think it's going to be good in take two. Good in take two. I think that's reasonable. What about Peace Mancer? I like this card, not because I think it's like particularly insane. I just like oh, the aesthetic of it. Oh my goodness. I, I like the the old wizard doing like wizard things. Uh, it's a trash I like Cesaro telling me every expansion that every card is playable. Dude, look, I'm not trying to say that this card is like insanely good, but I am trying to say that people do play into the Looking Glass and Rage every now and then. All right, I'll put it this way: I'd rather play into the Looking Glass than that. Yeah, this is into the Looking Glass of the downside. Yeah, sometimes you have to play it as a five mana four five. Except for yeah, the few times that a 5-mana 4-5 ward is helpful. And when also, you accelerate it, it's spell boosts. Unless you play it on turn 2, you usually have to draw last with this card. Yeah, which is not good, obviously. I I just ne think it's, it's neat that you can get a ward, but it's the opportunity cost is probably too high for a 5-4 ward, which really isn't that great. I think so, yeah. But, cool wizard guy. I like it. I approve. Clarice, Unpolished Mage, 3 play point three one, Runecraft Silver, Fanfare, remove all effects on an enemy follower except changes to its attack or defense. Cute. She's a very, very cute card. What silence you... has historically been pretty bad in Shadow Rissa. What do you want to silence in this game? Like a, a Mordecai? A take two. It's, it's mostly a take two card is what Skyshell said the other day. Is there's a lot of prime artifacts in take two, yeah, and you just can't beat that. They have infinite uh -huh. five fives. They put it on a rune card. Yeah, rune isn't very good. 
take two. They put this effect on a couple different cards, actually. Yeah, there's right. one but or two other classes. They're all with this. specifically for that. I feel like I feel like there's something there that we're missing. They might make it. It can't just it every something. class gets one of these generic effects. I, th I think this is just a fail safe in case they ever accidentally print something that needs to be silenced and there's no silence in the format. They just want to have the silence in the format. Deal with it. I'm happy to let someone find me something that I need to silence because then I can play double the gaps and be more happy with it. But, uh, yeah, I just at the moment I just don't know what you would really be wanting to go out of your way to silence. So we yeah, got, yeah, you can't think of anything. And yeah, we got burgeoning genius. Um, to my knowledge, this is the only Mysteria card in the expansion, which is worth noting. I think. Or play point. Does Mysteria trait matter? Um, um, there's a couple cards that care about Mysteria. The the they're not good, but I forget. I hope uh, one like this can get you your bunny corn nick nick if you ever want your bunny corn nick nick. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I want my bunny corn nick nick. I want that card to be playable. That's all I know. <laughs> but I played that uh, day one. You played it I day one. Remember that card? That, that card is cool, man. But all right. So, do you ever want this? So four play points, recover one evolution point, and then. Summon a Guardian Golem if there are two, 20 or less cards in your deck. That's neat. A Guardian Golem is cost at around 4 play points. I think it's like 3.5. Oh, it's a 4 mana 3-3 three, three ward. Yeah. I think it's pretty... But uh, usually, huh. but I think paying 4 mana just for a 3-3 three, three ward is a little bit higher than you should be I, paying. On average, it's what? Turn 7 or 8 before you get to 20 cards? Yes. Yeah. 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 You're I almost... think it's a cool card with a cool effect, but I think it comes in too late. I like yeah. that you can spell boost your entire hand and get an evolution point. I think that's pretty cool. I think it's cool, but I don't know if it's that great. I feel like four mana is just so expensive for this. Alright, I got you your picture of fake man. Okay. <laughs> Move on to this next card in the meantime. So we got Abyss Summoner, another card with this 20 or less cards clause. So Abyss Summoner is 7 play point 6, 6 and if you have 20 cards or less in your deck, Fanfare, choose either an Eldritch Chimera or an Eldritch Fiend. Eldritch Chimera is a five play point five, uh, 6 play point 5, 5 with Ward, and then it can't be destroyed by spells and effects. Eldritch Demon is 6 play point 4, 4 with Storm. At the end of your turn, restore 3 defense to this follower. I don't know. I don't think... This is quite a bit of stats, right? If you do have that 20 or less clause on. But it just seems pretty control. good in take two. It but... seems insane in take two because you're almost always going to have 20 or less cards in your deck. The problem is you have to play rune. Yeah, you're going to have less than 20 cards in your deck by I turn think, seven. I think Burgeon Genius probably isn't very bad in um in take two either because it gives you an Evo point back and you get a Guardian Golem. Oh, definitely. That's Carter. He has nice boobs. I don't know. Let's go to the next yeah. one. That is a good point. Oh. <laughs> you make a compelling argument. A lot of these cards do look like the the mid range rune or thing that y'all were talking you, that you brought up a few minutes ago. But I don't know if there's enough to kind of support. All right, this one. There's no such thing as support for mid range. You just play good cards. This yeah. this card is sweet. I don't I don't know if it's good, but it's sweet. I, I agree with you. This is the trap card of the game so far. Yes. If you have at least... So, first of all, it's a one-play point Earth Sigil. Just vanilla Earth Sigil. You can put it in your deck. Have fun. Um, and then, alternatively, if you have at least five play points, you can choose and play this as either Emergency Summoning or a Reactive Barrier. So, Emergency Summonings is when your opponent plays a follower, destroy this amulet. Last word, summon a Guardian Golem and a Clay Golem. And then, Reactive Barrier is when your opponent plays a spell, destroy this amulet. Last words, draw three cards, and then restore three defense to your leader. So I think both those effects are pretty relevant. One's giving you about five play points worth of stuff on the field. One of them's a ward, pretty nice. And the other one gets you some new cards, and it also heals you a bit. Once again, it's pretty reasonable. I'm pretty yeah. disappointed that you can't choose when to activate this card. Yeah, but you can't choose um, when to activate side. anything. 
Um, you can kind of. Yeah, but it's not. It's like, not like a true. It was a true. It's more like a secret in Hearthstone. Yeah. Except your opponent knows what it is. Yeah. yeah they get to see it and everything. But I mean, that's for real. You, 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 in Hearthstone, you know, like eighty percent most of the time. Yeah, and then you they get you with the meta. Then it just randomly gets you with eye for an eye, and you die. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, and then you move out of rank 20 anyway. I think this mm-hmm. can put your opponent in some interesting situations. Like, it can force them to make a mistake without realizing they're making mistakes. Dude, Dude I think this... Like, to an incredible degree, I believe. I think that this card should cost 2 mana so that I could just play Standstill. All, actually, this card should just be Standstill. I think this card yeah. is saying... I like Standstill. I think this card is saying we're going to be getting more effects like this down the line, and I think that's cool. They more open the window to one drop and just stand still, and then say go. I want to go on to Agliostro, adorable is genius. It, is it asking too much for them to have the effects swapped? Yes. To have the effects like, swapped? Because, like, if your opponent plays a spell... I'd rather play minions when they play spell. <laughs> I'd rather get minions. And then whenever they play a follower, you probably want the HP and like removal for it. I guess I get <laughs> I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. right, so I don't Ka- want the opposite. Caliostro. <laughs> Caliostro. So, four play point four three. This is the third one creature with the stat line we've seen so far today, right? Yeah. So this is becoming a pretty popular stat line. Um, Fanfare. Summon an Earth Essence. Fanfare again. Enhance 8. Cover 1 Evo point. Evolve. Earthrite. Put an Ars Magna into your hand and recover 2 play points. So the 2 play points gives you just enough play points to cast your Ars Magna. Now what's Ars Magna, you ask? Ars Magna is 2 play point, deal 3 damage to an enemy, enhance 4, restore 3 defense to your leader. So this is Lightning Helix, if you play Magic the Gathering. Sort of. Well, sort of. Cost sort of. Not really. This is like lightning strike that enhances to what's a four mana lightning helix. This, war leader's helix. Like the war leader's helix does four. In every rune. I just play Cadwastro in every rune. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good card. Um, now the more important thing to talk about is 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 it is is this a trap or not? That's a girl. Yeah, but it's it's like a girl, a guy in a girl's body. Yeah. So go read the lore, Tej. I did lore. read the lore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm That's very conflicted. It's not it's not a trap. Right. <laughs> it's more of a wall week. Yeah, it's weird. Like trans sort of? Anyways. Oh no. You Yeah. All yeah. I'm saying let's go with trans. <laughs> it's not a waifu, so it doesn't matter. And it does a spell boost. Uh, if you evolve right. it, if you evolve it, you, does, you gotta work pretty. This. You gotta work pretty hard though. That's enhance eight to spell boost once, right? What? Right, no, you have to evolve it to get the Ars Magna. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you can play it just on yeah. turn. Can do that. In the draw. Uh, I think it's a great card. Put it in the deck. I'm gonna work on mid range rune because yay, I like playing good cards that deck. The card is just stupid. All right, so here is Despacito Chimera. All right, now that seems reasonable. Six play point six six, fanfare. Deal three damage to an enemy follower if this card has been spell boosted at least six times. Then recover three play points if this card has been spell boosted at least nine times. Then gain storm if this card has been spell boosted at least twelve times. So I think, right, I think this is another just good ish card. So I, the question I got for you guys is: Is this better or is this worse than regular Chimera? Oh, it's worse than Chimera. It for is sure. right. One hundred percent worse than Chimera. But regular Chimera can't get Storm. It's pretty, pretty, pretty nice. Uh, how often do you get Storm on this card without winning already? Probably not very. But how very, often very do you worse. spell boost a zero cost Chimera a couple times? It happens, right? Uh, not too often. Not too often, but every now and then. Generally, if you're spell boosting a zero cost Chimera, it's to get that Daria turn. Yeah, you might not be wrong about that. Which, this card, you can't play. Multiple of these in one turn, unless you have always oh, six cost. It feels bad, man. Yeah, yeah. You it goes down to place... three if you spell boost it nine times, but it doesn't actually go down. It stays at six, and then one, two, three. 
Yeah, so all of a sudden... Oh, I can't play two of these in one turn, even though I have more than six play points. And I spell boost them nine times. You can if you're because... at nine play points, right? But... Yeah, but like at eight, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. If you're at nine, you just want to play your fucking giant chimera and win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, well, I think it'll see some play, but it doesn't seem as good as uh, Chimera on the surface. Yeah, I want to I wanna mess around with this card. I want yeah. to see how often this card gets to 9 spell boost and how often it gets to All 10 right, spell boost. All right, well, let's get to the better legendary. All right. Anyone want to take a shot at pronouncing this? Arulululululu. Mystic Seer. Arulumaya. Arulumaya. Arulumaya Mystic Seer. The six Cutie. Play- He's very tiny. 6.55. She's very cute. Yeah. Fanfare. Give ears are cute. Are, we, are those even ears? Those look like those horns. horns. She has ears underneath her horns. Look. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I think it's a hat. Those are huge ears, then, too. She's such a cutie. All right. So yeah. let's let's talk about uh, uh, Arulamaya. So, Fanfare, give your leader the following effect. At the end of your turn, if there are at least six cards in your hand, spell boost the cards in your hand. If there are five cards or less in your hand, draw cards until there are six in your hand. That's um, a good, good freaking card, man. This is like the Deus Ex Machina for Runecraft. I feel like we're just getting more of these for different classes now. It's like cards that'll completely refill your hand over and over again. Yeah, I mean, she just like draws and spell boosts and is a good card. Uh, there's not much else to say about it, honestly. It does everything also just stated stated better. Wants to do. Also... Uh, it, it's you get, get, the, you get the effect on Evolve. I, from the three classes we've seen, not very many controversial cards. It's like, this card's bad, and this card's really good. Not like, this card could be good, or not this like card PDK. might be bad. Like, uh, uh, it's really boring. Uh, that's just a complaint but i should throw it out there that's a fair complaint yeah this card is just added better than deus ex machina which i think is a little yeah silly. no there's a lot of cards that are just like pretty clearly pushed and other cards that are clearly filler yeah but we've come to expect that after they changed their design de- de- their design philosophy after wonderland oh god oh do we get dragon now we do get to talk about dragon now Oh, so let's talk about the best dragon card in the set. Let's talk about uh, Albacore. Albacore. Yeah. <laughs> seven play point seven five. Last word. Completely unplayable. Restore three defense to your leader. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely unplayable. Moving the, on. Wait, isn't this Sybil power creep? Please explain to me why this isn't. <laughs> Actually, it's Ouroboros power creep because it costs one less mana and has the unnerved effect. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Unlo- uh, it's gonna be kind of hard to stabilize, then play your Albacore as your win condition or as your heal condition. <laughs> <laughs> it, you just have so many good cards in Dragon right now. Like this is just a joke. <laughs> Take two, Dragon card. Hunter's rest is so big. Right, so yeah, dra- I don't think she's that amazing though. The Dragon Huntress. Whenever this follower attacks, the follower has at least five attack gain bane. Hey, look, it's like Dragoon Scyther never left, except it did, because this card doesn't have rush. Yes, <laughs> correct. <laughs> Pretty good art, though. Yeah. Wait, is that, like, fire on her foot? What is that? Looks like some magical stuff. Also, you know, you know in which matchup you need to clear out things with more than five attack? Dragon. No idea. The mirror. Yeah, to remove those albacores from your opponent's You know what's board. good in the mirror? <laughs> Dragon Cleaver Roy. And Feline. And Albacore. <laughs> Anyways, I don't I don't see Dragon Huntress making the cut. Yeah, I don't no, think this is very good. <laughs> so let's move I on to Venom. Look at ninety percent of the cards in this set and be like, nope. Venom Tail Salamander. Doesn't make it. Three play point. Venom Tail Salamander. Yeah, that seems more reasonable slightly. Three play point one three. Bane Ward can only attack if Overflow is active for you. This is a pretty annoying roadblock, right? Maybe it makes the cut in PDK. It completely destroys aggro. Yeah. 
Tech Which, and it's good against yeah, it's not probably. terrible against mid range either, right? Like they play their Phantom Cat. You had your Venom Tail Salamander on the field. But like, I don't want to evolve this. On turn three is the most value you get, because most of the time you get two. Two things that it kills. It just stops them from attacking. If they want to run their Lance or the Tempest in, it trades cleanly with that. Yeah. They I think have to run like three one ones in or be forced. Then around, you get to ramp behind it and stuff. If they're oh, forest crap, okay. you cry anyway, so... Yeah, just no, anything no, with no, one, no. one attack against forest makes you cry. One attack's fine against forest. Yeah. Anyways, I just hate forest. Moving on. Yeah, moving on. This is a good card. I think it'll see play somewhere. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it's all play. I'm not gonna say I think it's gonna make the cut everywhere. Um... Tailswing. I actually am interested in what you guys think about this one. So Tailswing is randomly destroy one of the strongest enemy followers in play. Subtract one from the cost of a Dragoncraft card in your hand. Trash. It's Trash. like a mirror card. Do we need to kill Hyperia or something? I don't know, do we? That's it. That's the question. Yeah, I feel like if you do need to kill Hyperia, this isn't bad. Cause like, it's whoa, like... whoa, whoa, whoa. But it's also good for killing Proto Bahamas. It's, it's also good at like... Oh. Which out. Proto Bahamut is notoriously not good at doing. You can it's get also your... good for getting your 11 mana Zoe down. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can get your Lindworm to 9 Zoe, mana. To be fair, you want to accelerate. I still see this as like a mirror card. Yeah, I feel like there's a metagame where this can just make it into a deck. I don't there's think what it's doing is unreasonable. For this card, yeah. Alright, Albacore, we this already is talked a more about. Controversial card. I'm glad about this card. All right, Hatchling, yeah. two play point two two, uh, turns into a four four on Evo. If you have at least seven play points, play as either a white scale dragon or a black scale dragon. So white scale dragon is seven play point five seven ward, and a black scale dragon is seven play point six two can't be attacked at the end of your turn. Deal one damage to all other followers. Um, I think it's interesting. I, like, what does this card I do? I don't know. I that's like, that's where I I'm wish, at. I wish <laughs> black scale. <laughs> I wish Black Scale Dragon had Storm. I wish that Black Scale Dragon didn't just die to Sylwyn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got 2 HP, dude. They can't attack it. How are you going to kill it, man? How am I going to kill it? You can't. BBK. <laughs> you can't kill it. <laughs> Imagine this just gets... Like, this is your turn 7, your opponent just plays PDK and just kills this. <laughs> you can't kill it, guys. <laughs> right. oh my God. You can't kill it. <laughs> Alright, just prove that we can't kill it, so I guess this card... Alright, awesome. put it in all your decks, moving on. Right. Black Scale Dragon's got some sweet art, right? Yeah, it, it does. Put it in all your decks, and always save it for 7, and always choose Black Scale Dragon. And then question yeah, why you listen to Teji every time you did and it. you'll realize that the card can't be killed, according to Teji. Yes. All right. If they kill it, they're cheating. Alright, so let's talk about what I believe is a good card, instead of that previous card. Let's talk about Dragon Sanctum. You have at least three play points, and Overflow is active for you. You can play it as either Trample or a Whirlwind, or you can just play it for three play points. You get a Countdown 1, Last Words, gain an empty play point orb. This is... Right, so this feels like it should be too slow, but Dragon has Force of the Dragon Newt. <laughs> this is like slow Dragon Oracle, but it also gets becomes like a playable card in the late game. Yeah, so I think it'll make the cut at least at one or two, but like, I feel like it's a, it's a crime that this should make the cut. Yeah, you probably feel kind of bad that it does, but it gets the job done, right? You might be playing but... worm. So, so you might just make more or less because it's. I, I want the meta to be fast enough that this is not a card you put in your deck, but. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, if, the, if that meta exists, then Lindworm doesn't exist, right? Yeah. Probably. Well, it might just because there's so much clearing in Lindworm that it doesn't really matter. I think it gives you access to some pretty reasonable effects. Like, Trample is just the uh, last words to destroy a random enemy follower, so on an empty board, you can, like, play your Trample out and play, like, a couple other things, and it kind of gives you protection to set up for your later turns. The same thing for Whirlwind, if you're playing against a deck like Forest, where they like to go wide, you can just set down your Whirlwind to turn early, then you'll you'll be reasonably safe going into your next turn. Mm-hmm. All right, moving on. All right, so this is the other half of Dragoon Scyther. 
They just took the card, split it in two. This is <laughs> Aliza Pugilis Princess. I don't even know what Pugilis means. Um, Pugilis. What does that mean? It's a, it's like martial artist. Right. Good for her. She's a martial artist and dragon. Uh, three play point three two. <laughs> Rush. Fanfare, if overflow is active for you, wait for it. You get clash gain plus one plus one pog champ. She's a waifu. <laughs> um Tetch, can you look at this card this, and tell me she's not a waifu? This is she's a waifu. She also hard counters puppet portal. <laughs> this is power crept lion champion. You heard it here first. You know what also cooks <laughs> puppet portal lion champion? Whatever, dude. But this card's way. Lion Champion doesn't cost three mana. <laughs> this is it's a more attractive than Lion Champion. Right. Well. L- Lancer of the Tempest is a pretty good card, right? This doesn't have the enhance, but it's got like a slightly different uh, effect. Yeah, that's I guess relevant. PDK could play her. That's this seems cool. like a great card in PDK. Yeah, this card seems pretty solid. Like I, I just w- want to say, I don't like PDK. Get this that is just card out of here already. This is another card for Bladed Hedgehog to fear. <laughs> yes. That's a good thing. I'm okay with that. I love PDK. It's probably my favorite archetype. So what about Pyroworm Commander? I think this card's pretty sweet. So fanfare, put a blazing breath into your hand. Evolve, put a lightning blast into your hand. You get a bomb. You get for I think the value is just too good. Yeah, this is just solid. Yeah. It just get, it does all the things you want to do. Four mana, three, three, put a blazing breath into your hand is good enough. If you yeah. evolve it and have lightning blast, it's gonna sit in your hand for a bit, but it's still good. There are gonna be games where you're never right? even gonna like, cast that lightning blast. They're gonna she be... was saying that in the mirror, yeah, removal, and you yes. get removal of this card. Yeah, yes. like and that happened to me. On turn ten, you, you can play, play like, this guy. You can evolve blast, him, and then lightning trample. blast the same turn. Yeah, or you play like lightning blast into trample, and your opponent's like, "I want to play my big card, but I, but yeah, yeah." Anyways. I think I think Lightning Blast is a good card. Like Lightning Blast gets much better when you're not actually putting it in your deck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so true, true Dragon, Skathacha. Um, I forget where who whose stream I was watching, but they pointed out that this card is in fact not a dragon. Somewhere in the Dude. lore, she's a dragon, but really, really named. This it. card's a cutie, <laughs> but this card is I think worse than Sybil. It's definitely worse than Sybil. Oh, yeah. is, is she worse than Sybil after the nerf, though? You may point yes. to her and say, but she can ramp on turn four. And to that, I will say, yes, that's true. <laughs> to that, I will say yes. But she also can't ramp after seven. Yeah, that that I remember in the little bit of testing we did. That came you up can't go pretty often. Awesome to ten. Yeah. You can't ramp on the really important turns, but a 5-5 five five is pretty reasonable if you do get the 5-5. Five five and If you're ramping, it's a 5-3, though, which is real trash. I feel like subtracting 2 damage from a source is nice, but that's about it. It's really not that much damage that you're negating. They can just send in a 1-1 one one and then, cool, good job, True Dragon. <laughs> but the question so. is, does Dragon need the ramp and play her anyways? No. Uh, I think they do, but we'll see because maybe not. I think that a five mana five three is just so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like you evolve I mean, it, and then it she just was never that great when we were testing. Honestly, I liked playing her because she was a five mana five five, and that was about it. Yeah, I played like two of them on ten, and then you just like Adramalect me, and I was like, okay, that was fun. Speaking of yeah. Adr- speaking of Adramalek, let's talk about this card because I think this is a pretty sweet card. This is a seven play point zero six, pretty beefy, I know. Um, so it's got accelerate three. You draw two cards, so it turns into a concentration for dragon. And alternatively, you can play it, and then it gets fanfare gain plus X plus zero, deal X damage to an enemy follower. X equals number of non follower cards you played this match. So most of the time, I played this card in a little bit of testing. I w- I had done with this card. It was hitting for like seven and eight. Which is pretty yeah. reasonable. That's it's pretty. It's a nice way to just remove something. On turn ten, you can like go Aldermech, remove something big, and play another Aldermech in concentration, which is pretty nice. I think it's just good. It's a good card. Yeah, this card's gonna be a three of in PDK. 
in PDK. Does accelerating add alternate count as a non follower card? Yeah, yeah acceleration is a spell. Rather. In one worm, I don't see how this card is three of. In Linworm, you don't see it as a three of? I don't see how it's not a three of. Oh, okay. I was about to say, I'm very confused by that statement. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so this one is Zoe, or is it Zoe? One of, it's one of those two, Zoe or Zoe. Arbiter of the Skies. So we have our first 11 drop in the game, right? I think this is the first game's 11 drop, or the game's first 11 drop. I he think is, so. He is an 11 play point 7 6. A legendary, accelerate one, draw a card. Put a 10 play point 6 5 Zoe, Arbiter of the Skies, without accelerate into your deck. So unless you do something to reduce the cost of Zoe, you're going to have to accelerate her. And if you accelerate her, I mean, this card is so weird. What do you guys think about this thing? I feel like it's doing such a strange thing. I think it's fine because it's, uh, well, I think it's, it's like justified in Lindworm because it's just, I mean, it's insight. It gives you, it cycles and gives you, adds to your spell count. And then maybe you redraw the 10 mana version. Um, the, the, the place where this gets spicy is, is it worth running any sort of cost reduction card? Like, I think the two we have access to are, are Tail Swing and Draconic Singer. Yep. Are either of those cards worth running? Uh, like, Problem. to make this a 10 drop? No, it's, you're really happy actually just playing this as Insight in Lindworm, especially, just because oh, it's Lindworm. It's Insight. But another really cool interaction with this card is if you have Dragonfall Pendant out, like this, you just die on the spot. I know it's gonna happen where somebody's just gonna go Zoe, Zoe, Zoe next game. Yeah, just gonna go Zoe, Zoe, Zoe. I just one of them was evoed, so you just take. Well, she's too cute for me not to run three, but you know we'll yeah. see how she ends up. Something else might have matter. Five she leader, doesn't... She doesn't yes, and I'll play her for one game and then switch back to fourteen. All right. Guys, the expansion is officially out. We're going to have to get through these cards so that we can play with some new cards. All right. Oh, so, so, shit. So, so we might be the second best card of the expansion because she's super cute. Yeah. That's true. I think this card... All right, let's, let's go quick. You, you can skip Shadow. We can skip Shadow. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> There's, like, There's like three cards. All right. One of them... I played some Shadow. All right, it's and all... I was winning games left and right. So Not even like... Here. Now, I, I lost to this card with my legendary fighter aggro deck. <laughs> um, well, this is a big ass announcement only for residents of the Chinese regions of Hong Kong and Macau. <laughs> what? I'm just saying, everyone who logs in is going to see that. Alright, so we got Golden Casket, two play points. If you have at least five, or two play points, when an allied follower is destroyed, destroy this amulet and summon a zombie. So, two play point, two, two that you can save for later, I guess. And then, if you have at least five play points, play it as either Profane Resurrection or a Fable Treasure. Now, Profane Resurrection is uh, last words, uh, summon a lich and a zombie. Whenever an allied follower is destroyed, destroy this amulet. So, it's the same effect as a two play point card, except you just get a lich too. Or you get Fable Treasures, which is an allied follower is destroyed, destroy this amulet, draw two cards, restore two defense to your leader, gain two shadows. So you get quite a bit of stuffs. This is a great card. I played with it, and it's like always good on five, unless your board is literally empty. And then you're a little bit sad, but you can just play it later when you have a board. Uh, I don't play shadow, so whatever you guys say, I agree with. I, I think disagree. I'm more you agile. Disagree, moving on. All right. <laughs> two play right. point two two, <laughs> Charnan curse bound lower. Uh, oh, that was a bad card. Move on. Man, yeah, fair necromancy silent. six. Why is this cost six? Yeah, that's, <laughs> like, that's so expensive. Like I already, I'm already questionable about what I want to silence and when it costs me six. And like, all right, so you're gonna play this on. You're gonna want to play this as a two two, and you're gonna have eight shadows, right? And you're gonna be like, I want a two two. And you're gonna be like, I can silence that that one two. Do I want to silence that one too? Do I really Stop want to silence there. this goblin? It's going to force you to. We're going to lose a lot of yeah, viewers. You're actually forced to if you have the six shadows and you play this card. Yeah. It's... Yeah. All right. So, Melancholic Medium, 5 play point, 4 4. Accelerate 1, summon a ghost. Neat. I don't. So, accelerate 1, summon a quick. Yeah, this card is bad. Come on. Yeah. I like the art. That's about it. 
Lady Grey oh, Deathweaver. This card. This is a good card. And Move so, on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So play three in your shadow yeah. decks. Next card. Jeez, we're going through these so yeah. fast. <laughs> Fran well, Monster like, Girl. It's literally. Uh, don't this know card, how good it is. I, I didn't test it. I don't think it makes a cut, but it's what, possible. Fran? Yeah. Um, so I didn't think this card was too crazy until who was it? I was talking to Tolkien Cast about this card, and it seemed he made it seem better than I had initially thought because uh three play point zero one obviously not that great, but Fran's curse is pretty reasonable. You're playing you're basically playing three play points for a deal force to something, or three play points for a three two. Those are both like halfway reasonable costs for what you're getting. Yeah, maybe you can fit it in somewhere. I don't know. I think you're just getting a free body. Like, you're getting two bodies. You get a zero Soul cost. Card. Yeah. So, the Soul Conversion coming back, that gets better. And look at okay. this. We got Soul Conversion. I, I want to say something about Soul Conversion. Okay. This card is not that good right now. It pops your Golden Cassius. card is not that good right now. You don't have too many, like, bad followers you want to destroy, unless you have an Arcus already going. Then you can just get rid of the ghost. You don't really care about that. That's asking for a turn eight to, for a one cost card to come online. Yeah, not always gonna happen, but yeah. Wait, I just pulled an animated seraphic blade. That's sweet. I'm just not a fan of destroying my own stuff as my game plan. <laughs> but all right, so we got four hey. play points, three two. Stygian warden. I don't even know what a Stygian is. So fanfare. Stygian. Burial right. Destroy a random enemy follower. This card's pretty good. Yeah, it's fine. I played it. Sweet art. It's Necro Assassin from the hand. This is a, it's got some sweet art, man. He's like riding that girl's riding in a can and like a boat made of candles. I don't think it's made of candles. Oh, poggers, I, I pulled Vera. Oh, wow. Fiendish yep. Wraith Knight. Three play point two one. This is a good card too. This is a very good card, I think, right? Three play point two one. Fanfare, gain last words, summon another one of these, and then you can enhance it, and then gets last words, deal three damage to a random enemy follower. So it's just very flexible, and you're getting a sticky 2 1, I think, right? Yeah, it's a good card. It's pretty reasonable if you have a soul conversion, too. You don't mind sacrificing it's these. Not exciting. Yeah. I am not sold on this card. I played it, it's I good. Either. Plagued City? I don't know about this one at all. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try this card. I don't think it's good, but I want to try it. Like, I think it feels much more like a sideboard card, honestly. I'm, I'm ready So for the day that someone tries to reanimate, like, a Mordecai or something, and they have this out, and oh they realize it, it just becomes a zombie. <laughs> uh, I just want to point, my first pack opening has Gorba and Dragonites. First oh, wow. That, that, I that was destined right there. Welcome to the stream, Akamaru. How's it going? <laughs> Uh, sorry. No, let's go to the next Seriously. card. We're not going to talk for 45 minutes about Plague City? Oh, come on, man. Oh, God. <laughs> Fuck this card, by the way. I mean, I think it's a nice controversial card, honestly, but I don't I don't think I want to talk too much about it. You want to go fast. Everyone that thinks Fairy Spirit Maiden is a good card has been debating themselves. Why is this not a good card? It's a really cute card. I feel like this card will get there every now and then. I think you're going to be disappointed to play this more often than not. Bro. I think somebody's yeah, going to have... It and it, I never actually set it off. Yep. I think so. That I'm... is what I imagined. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I pulled Lococo Poggers. Oh my god, first back. Let's it's, go. It's a 2 play point two two though, so I don't think the floor for that is that insanely low. I think... But Shadow has good... Oh, Shadow has I... great two drops. Yeah. Anyways, let's move on. More if it was 2 Eternal play duels. points, burial right 2. I could get behind it and draw two, sure. Oh wait, what about Mordecai? The actually duelist. better. <laughs> so ten play point seven seven, fanfare necromancy six. Evolve this follower. Evolve this follower if it was summoned using reanimate. So I never want to play this on ten. Nope. You only want to reanimate it on seven. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not too sold on reanimate shadow still. And you're you have a better reanimate target in Proto Bahamut. Yeah. So I don't know about it. Let's go into Bewitching Succubus. Two play point two two. 
Fanfare, Enhance 4, Summon 2 Forest Bats. I think this is a good 2 drop for Blood. Yeah, I, I think it's good, but I don't know if it's going to find a home is my problem. Um, Blood is losing all of the playable 2 drops they've ever had this expansion with Spiderweb Imp going away and Baphomet going away. So I think they're going to have to find space for this card because they're just not going to have too many other good cards. Yeah, we'll see if Aggro Blood is playable though. If Bat Blood is playable, this card's playable. If not, this card isn't playable. I think that's a good way to put it. Uh, Crimson Desire. This card's got sweet art. Um, three play point, deal two damage to your leader, and restore an Evo point. But you have to be out of evolve points for this to be useful. You. I don't like this. Yeah. I don't. I feel like a card needs to do a little bit more than just re restore an Evo point. Like Aaron was good because she restored an Evo point. It was just a sweet ward with a with a with healing. Yeah. Um, maybe in Jorm this could be playable, but even yeah. then I think that's doubtful. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna pull the legendary fighter. Zahek the curse branded. So three play point four two. Nice body. I think. I think four two is pretty reasonable. Um, evolve, deal 1 damage to an enemy follower if Vengeance is not active for you. Deal 1 damage to all enemies if Vengeance is active for you. So this is like a bigger Lyrial, I guess? 1 play point more if you're getting 2 more attack on your Lyrial? It can't hit face. Bad card. Yeah. Not nearly as flexible as Lyrial either. Not too, in not too crazy about it. Devil Hand. Fanfare. Enhance 7. Deal two damage to a random enemy follower and give a random enemy follower plus two plus two. I think sucks, right? Trash. Yeah, this is garbage. Move on. Restless Parish. Um, I think this is a cool card. So zero play points. Countdown one. Fanfare. Deal one damage to your leader. Last words. Draw a card. If you have at least two play points, you can play it as either Nightfall or Madness Revealed. So Nightfall is two play points at the end of your turn. Summon your at the end of your opponent's turn rather. You summon a Forest Bat. So that bat's gonna be able to go face right away, and then. Madness Revealed is fanfare, deal 4 damage to your leader, last words, restore 8 defense to your leader. So this is a way to get you into Vengeance, this is a way to gain some HP over the course of a turn. Um, I think all three are very solid effects, right? Yeah, I think this is a good card. Animated Legendary Fighter. Wow. Okay. Alexandrite yeah. Demon, 2 play point two one. Uh, this fan. is a very good turn. Fanfare, put a Blazing Sapphire or a Blazing Ruby into your hand. Blazing Sapphire is Countdown 2, Fanfare, draw two cards, last words, deal two to your leader. And then Blazing Ruby is Countdown 2, Fanfare, destroy an enemy follower, last words, deal two damage to your, to your leader. So you're getting two very relevant cards, and then you're also getting a way to do some damage to yourself, which is arguably a good or a bad thing, depending on the board state. But... This makes up for the fact that we're losing Baphomet, I think. And I think that's the most important card. The most important thing about this card. Also this got card has really good art. Yeah, that's was, the most important part about it. I was going to say, it's got nice art. So, Pomeran. How do you pronounce that second thing? Erst? Pomeran Erst's Pride? I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't it matter. It's not a good card. Yeah. It's yeah. cool. This is one of the few card. cards that gets a ton of stats when you evolve it, right? This gets plus four, plus four yeah. when you evolve it. That's pretty cool. Maybe, maybe like this card, like kind of reminds me of Soul Dealer because you're just evolving and you're getting a massively statted thing for what you're paying. But, but it's not even that good because it deals three damage to itself, and then they only have to deal seven to it to kill it, which isn't really that hard. You're getting a six mana eight seven for this, basically. But like, imagine just tempo evolving this, and you're like, "Yo, deal with my eight seven. They can't. You can silence Palmer and says Akka, and then he loses the ward, Pog Champ. <laughs> I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna pay Necromancy six for that, by the way. <laughs> Yo, Sam. <laughs> Gerda Blilu? Is that how you pronounce this? What is a Gerda Blilu? That's a real question. It's um, something that's going to I mean, fucking up a ladder exactly once. Yeah, you're gonna lose to this one time this expansion. Oh, it's gonna feel great. Oh, that's gonna yes, feel fucking dude. terrible. Alright, so Fanfare, Enhance 9. If your leader has 19 defense or less, this follower's de attack and defense becomes X. X equals 20 minus your leader's defense. And then Evolve, Gain Storm if your leader has 2 defense or less. So this is get him the card. I want to play this as a 1 of in all my blood moving forward. Then you, you just get him with it. It's gonna happen. 
one day. All right. You have fun. Yeah. Uh, I will probably uninstall the second I lose to this card, to be honest. Well, Azure, have I, I got a game for you after this? <laughs> um, so let's go to Narmaya Ephemeral Blade. So 4.43 Bane. Um, so normally I feel like Bane on a 4.3 isn't that great. But I think since you're going to play this on the Evolve turn, it's actually not that bad because they're going to be evolving something into it. So... If they evolve like a four or five into it, it'll at least die. You don't feel that bad. I about hate it. that this is a four three and not a three four. Or just a four four, Augers. <laughs> yeah. So Bane. Uh evolve uh, when you evolve it, you destroy an enemy follower and then you deal damage to your leader until your HP is at until your HP drops to ten. So I love this card. Everything about it is great. Yeah, I think just dropping yourself to, into Vengeance is always a good thing. Great art. Quite a bit yeah, of tempo. Yeah, mostly great art. Let's go on to the next one. I think this is probably a good card. I also like this card, Vera, Night Fanatic. Um, Vera is absolutely fucking busted. You think it's busted? All right. The so 2 play point yeah, two two. Evolve. evolve. When you evolve it, until the start of your next turn, give your leader the following effect. Your leader can't be damaged. This effect lasts until this follower leads the area. Until the start of your next turn, subtract 2 to, from all damage dealt to this follower. So they're going to have to commit some resources to deal with their Vera. If they want to kill you, they have to deal with your Vera, which is nice. So this can force... This gives, like, Blood another way to just, like, be at under 10 HP, but still, like, pseudo have more than 10 HP, I think. I think this is just very strong. Yeah. It, I think this is probably the best card Blood got. Vera? Yeah, Vera's amazing. So, the best that, card. I'll put it this way they have to have deal six damage and one hit to kill Vera after it evos. And you can just play it, evo it as a brick wall, like against aggro decks, and they can't do anything about it. They have to kill this card. It's actually why I love Matera, because Vira is such a strong card. That's how I killed uh, Teji's Vira, was with Matera. Oh, yeah. It's true. So, after Vira, we have Person. And this card is clearly not a person. It's a half, half lion, half human thing. And it is Mufasa. A yeah, half Mufasa. Yeah. 10 play point six six Storm Bane. Uh, fanfare, this is not Zeus. And then it has Accelerate 9. Destroy all allied followers and amulets. For each card destroyed, put a random follower that costs more than the card from your the card destroyed from your deck into play. So that effect is cool. You're getting like the Jabberwock effect on an Accelerate 9, but what are you trying to get with it? Like, if you have a Spawn of the Abyss on, in play, and then you like Go face the spawn of the abyss, play your person, get a person off your spawn of the abyss. It's pretty sweet, but you're probably winning that game anyway. Yeah, I mean, you can run like. Just to go face with. What are they called? Soul Destroyers? Soul. The, the Seven Mana Storm card. That thing. Soul, soul Dominator? Soul Dominator, that one. I'm yeah. pretty sure that just rotated, though. Soul yeah. Dominator did just rotate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. never mind. <laughs> All right. I low-key think this card's accelerate effect is stronger than its 10-minute effect. I don't think either of its effects are that great for its cost, though, is the problem with it. Uh, I think this card's just garbage. Just move on. Sir, I am a Mufasa main. Don't talk crap. Hello? Mufasa I think it's main. going to be a meme that I'm going to be pissed at losing to. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about Sealed Tome. You have at least two play points in play. Choose play. This is either Sacred Teachings or Forbidden Teachings. Now... Uh, in sealed tome form, it's just count down one last words, draw a card. And Best sacred, form is zero cost. Sacred teachings is last words, summon a holy falcon with count down one, so it goes face a little bit. Forbidden teachings is last words, draw two cards, give your leader the following effect. Followers can't be played this last until the start of your opponent's turn. I think it's neat that this card gives your leader a downside for a turn. Yeah, it's, it's weird, but I, I, I like the design space. You play this on, like, four, right? They can't play anything, really. And then turn five, you get to play your 
tea time. So what about what about Heisen, Priest of the Winds? This is a two play point, one three, and then it's got ward. So it's like your Serpent Charmer, right? No, Serpent Charmer is the three two. Snake Priestess. This is like a Snake Priestess. But when you evolve it, it gets it goes from a one three to a five four. So it gets plus four plus one. Instead of so it gets a little bit extra stats for Evo. Aggressive stat. Yeah. A real nice this, aggressive stat. This guy this guy hits hard, man. This is a five four. <laughs> if this guy goes face right. once, just think you're already in range of summit with lion uh, uh Heavenly Knight. I think the I think the art on this guy like really shows how much this guy wants to go face, like in evolve form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it really gets that point across. He just wants it, dude. He he is he is mid decking the cameraman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that guy's gonna wake up with a terrible day. Yeah. Um and probably but, not his wallet either. Is is Haven interested in a one three that evolves into a five four? Um, I think it's gonna be super meta dependent. Yeah. I think it's an overall solid card. I th think it doesn't fit into any of the current archetypes, but like there's always stuff like uh, Amulet Haven coming back that just plays like strong followers. And then Garuda because he's busted. Yeah, and if you play strong followers, like you, you can always stick in amulets and pop those, and yeah. Do twelve damage. That's where he belongs, right? Like, I I want to evolve this thing face. That's all I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you want stuff that helps you to do that. So you don't really want too many amulets, and if you have amulets, you want the ones that are guaranteed to be strong. Like turtles. Yeah. So we got Bashful All Mirage. So three play point, two three. Fanfare. Enhance five, gain plus two and oh, and gain ambush until the end of your opponent's turn. At the start of your turn, you restore two defense, or at the end of your turn, rather, restore two defense to this follower. So this is good in Tenko Shrine. It also pushes some extra face damage. I think this card is just automatically procs Tenko Shrine twice. Automatically procs it twice. At the yep. at the yep. end of if your you turn, it restores two ambush. defense once, right? And then she has Ben Ambush, right? So oh yeah, so turn, you're assuming that she's going to do it the next turn. You yeah. get another, yeah. Unless they have a three damage AOE on turn five, which is pretty rare. It have flag. to be Dragon have gone first plus Ramping. All right, tail swing. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Um, I think Bashful Al Mirage is very solid, right? Hmm. Yeah, card's pretty okay. Also doubles as a three drop and still keeps the heal as a three drop. Yeah. Yep. All right, so Angelic Idol five play point five five. Ward can't attack. Evolve this follower if an allied amulet is destroyed during your turn. Um. Neat. I don't know how to feel about this. What card? Wait, An Angelic Idol? I don't think it's that great. Yeah, I think it could be okay, actually. Maybe. You play it. It's, it's like a... If you're playing Amulet Haven, specifically. I think a 5-5 five five board's not bad, right? In my ideal world, nobody would play Haven, period. If yeah. you pull this off Aether, it's much better than you think. Oh, you're not wrong about Aether. that at all, actually. Five six ward, not bad. Yeah. And searchable. Oh, I just pulled an animated Dale of Phil. Oh, that's a good pull. Alright, let's talk about you, you don't really want to play this from your hand on five. You kinda just wanna pull it though. I I wanna talk about the more important part of the set, Father Punishment. <laughs> one play point one one evolves into a one one. Evolve destroy an enemy follower amulet. So this card's a pretty good meme. <laughs> Uh, he's, what's he doing in that art there? He is bashing somebody over the head with what looks like a wooden bowl. So in that first one, what's he doing there? Oh, he that guy is about to get punished. <laughs> Wait, uh, Father Punishment is by far the best card from the new set. All I know is yesterday I was playing against Teji, and Teji has the audacity to play a Vania. And I played Father Punishment, evolved it, destroyed his Vania, and traded it into the bat. The bat. And I was pretty happy with that. So it's best case scenario. Who's going one for one with the Vania? 
Yeah, but yo, it's up five play points. I even got a, I even got an evolve out of that Vania. It was great. <laughs> Rich, I didn't evolve that Vania. You're a liar. You're probably no. I'm the liar. You're right. <laughs> Did he hit you in the face for five or something? I don't know, man. He hit me in the face for two when he when the Vania entered the battlefield. But Prism Swing. Prism Swing is three play points. Deal four damage to an enemy follower. Put a Holy Lion Crystal into your hand. So this is like Serpent's Bite. Probably better because Serpents aren't as good as Lion Crystals, I think. This is a take two card. I think this is just a fine card in general. Three play points, deal four to something, put a 2 2 into your hand. I think that's reasonable. If there was one more card that gave Holy Lion Crystals, I think this card would be really good. Great. But 15 Holy Lion Crystals in your deck would probably be. I think this card is the threshold. good right. not for the Lion Crystal part, but for the three mana deal four. Yeah, I think that part's fine. And then the other side is just, yo, you get a two mana 2 2. Enjoy. I think this is a good card. I think this. I think this is the best Lion Crystal card so far. Uh, that or Peace Weaver. I'm not sure. All right, so we got Sophia, Poyas Pilgrim. Two, three play point two three evolves into a two three randomly summon a copy of an allied follower that has been destroyed during this turn. Um, cute. Yeah. I don't know when you're actually going to be able to reliably use the evolve effect. You won't. It's a bad card. Yeah. All right. Next. Uh, Holy Priest uh, Lorena. Uh, uh, this card is in incredibly busted. Haven Haven Levi. Oh, oh my Zoe Poggers. The two play point two two evolves into That's a four four. Nice. Evolve. Choose put either Lorena's Holy Water or Lorena's Iron Fist into your hand. Holy Water is one play point. Restore two defense to an ally. Draw a card. Solid way to draw a card. Solid way to gain HP. And then Lorena's Iron Fist is deal X damage to an enemy follower. X equals the attack of the strongest allied follower in play. So on the turn that you would play a Levi and evolve it, your Crimson Sorcerer would be hitting for three. On the turn that you play your Lorena's Iron, your Lorena and then the Iron Fist, your Lorena's hitting for something for four, and the Iron Fist is also hitting something for four. So just very good removal, I think. Any anyone disagree? Lorena is pretty just. Busted. Yeah, just solid. Yeah. Demis, She's super cute and super busted. Then Mrs. Purge, what do you guys think about this one? Eight play points, banish all followers. I like that we're getting another AoE in the format. Uh, I hope it's good because I already opened my play set. I really like the art on this card. I bet it looks really nice animated. I'm I'm just gonna assume any card that has Themis is written on it is like at least halfway playable. Mm, yeah. yeah, to an extent, I think you're right. Move on. I'm not really seeing a scenario where I wouldn't want to play the cards. Unless you're looking for, like, storm damage and you have three of these. Or I need to <laughs> really, really tech against aggro. But I'm not sure that that's true. I think that you probably play one or two of this in every game at the very least. The buy cat passes black. Yeah, Lincoln. it makes mid sword matchup, like, free. Well, I mean, they Themis is you, right, as mid-sword, and then you just play Arthur again, so it's not the end of the world. Well, the, the biggest thing is that uh, they have Jean and they have Themis. Yeah. So now you just keep... So I they think, don't have as many board fells as you have board clears. I think Sword's just got so much late game that it can survive through these Themis purges, but... Move on to Delafield, Gem Princess. So, 6 play point four five Ward. Fanfare, give your leader the following effect. At the end of your turn, restore 1 defense to all allies. So, over the course of a game, it's probably going to heal the face for, like, 4 to 10, I would assume, right? Depending on how long the game goes, if you play this on curve. Uh, you don't assume a game that lasts long, right? Like, you assume it lasts uh, a max ten, turn 10. Yeah, that's usually where they start ending. But I can I can I can see this getting in quite a bit of healing over the course of the game. But let's Even say if it heals for just four, it's fine, right? Yeah, let's say it's probably gonna heal for like four to five on average, is my guess. Yeah. So six it's play points. You get like three to five tango shrine triggers. 
a turn, right? Like, once you get this online, it's tr getting multiple Tenko Shrine triggers a turn, and it's just going to be obnoxious. There's really no other word for it. And that's why people are already starting to add hate cards for Tenko Shrine. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Tenko Shrine, and I think it's going to be good. So, next we got Garuda, Ruler of the Storms. 9 play point 6 6. Accelerate 1, subtract 1 from the countdown of an allied amulet. So his Accelerate is a, I'm going to go ahead and say is a worse, uh, what's the name of that card? Hollow Dogma, right? I don't think this card is that much better than Hollow Dogma, if at all. When you accelerate it, at least. But then, when you play it at on 9, he's got Fanfare, subtract 3 from the countdown of all allied amulets. Whenever an allied amulet is destroyed, deal 3 damage to the enemy leader. So if you just set up a board of two or three amulets, or four amulets, if you somehow set that up, this is a nuke. It can hit for anywhere from three to twelve damage. It's, I think the accelerate's going to be a lot more relevant than people. We're talking about Garuda? Yeah. Yeah. This card's busted. Card's bust? Card it makes so people have to play around an amulet a turn before it normally pops up. That's Wait, true. It also just makes you have to, like, once it gets to turn 9, you can just do a shit ton of damage. Yeah, it's a lot of damage. This card's gonna end a Not lot of games. Not a whole lot of counterplay there, either. Yeah, I think Garuda's gonna end quite a bit of games. Alright, so we're up to the portal cards, then we have a couple neutrals, and then we are done with the set review. Alrighty. Alright, so... Ancient Apparatus. One play point, count down two at the end of your turn. Randomly put one of the two following cards into your deck. Mystic Artifact, Radiant Artifact, or Prime Artifact. Um, I don't really want to be shuffling those into my deck. Especially not starting on turn one. Yeah, I don't like this. Move on. Then Artifact Squadron at the start of your turn, put a random artifact cost that cards. That costs three play points into your hand. I guess if you want a whole bunch of those three play point cards in your hand, that's fine, but I don't, I once again, I just don't think this is what you want to do in the Artifact Portal. Artifact Glow, whenever you play an Artifact, restore one defense to your leader. Now, I think that's actually relevant. That gives, that's a good effect, because Portal can, like, play 12 Analyzings in a turn and then just heal for a billion. The only problem with that is it does take up a board spot. Yeah. Which... You already have Acceleradium taking up a board slot. Yep, so now that's huge. Yeah, I think it's good. You have three. So if, let's say you start with a Majesty Lion, play a hand one, you have to copy your Analyzing. Now you have one board spot left. So you have to do everything in one board spot. Yeah, the, the only time I ever see this being good is when you already have like an Acceleration on the field or you have space for the Acceleration and you really need the HP. I think the other two effects are pretty lackluster. Um, we have Ancient War Machine after that, to play point one four. Whenever an allied artifact card comes into play, this gains ward, so it's like a spider web imp. Spider web imp is a good stat line. Um, Portal already has Rosa, who gets ward if she's in resonance. The card doesn't really see play. Do you guys think this card is going to see play? Not really. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a tech card. I think... Portal just wants their two mana two twos that shuffle artifacts into their deck. Jessica, Cheerful Cannoneer, three play point three two. Fanfare, give plus one plus oh to an allied portal craft follower. That follower can be targeted. Your opponent the opponent can only target that follower. Um what portal craft cards do you want to give an extra attack? Like giving an extra attack isn't bad, obviously, but I don't know. I feel like you don't really want that effect too much. No, you don't. I don't think this is very good. Uh, what She's about, cute, though. What about Enkidu? I think this card's cool. Uh, it's cool, but I don't think it's that great. So 5 play point four four Ward. Fanfare. Put a Gilgamesh into your hand yeah. if Resonance is active for you. But you say this is bad, but is this not the finisher artifact Portal has always wanted, guys? No, it's not. You, you can play your Enkidu. Play a whole bunch of artifacts, keep your turn going because you have infinite play points, and then in that same turn you play the Gilgamesh. No, you're just gonna play three Sylvias and kill them in seven turns. Oh, you're probably right. 
Um, Gilgamesh is not particularly great. <laughs> so going through hoops to get a Gilgamesh is probably not particularly great. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, Nicholas, stalwart this is... inventor. This card I think is pretty reasonable. Yeah, yeah, I think this is cool. It's just a nice value. You can kind of slot it in into any deck. So it's a four play point four three, and that's about it. But then you can, when you play it, it gets fanfare, summon a go go robomi. Yeah, that, that's not really about it. <laughs> yeah. And then fanfare and hate, uh, fanfare enhance eight. You immediately pop the go go robomi. So let's take a look at go go robomi. This card's pretty trash. Is all I'm gonna say. We should yes. go off. So, go go. You don't think this card is good? I think it's reasonable. So go go robomi is a three play point countdown amulet. Summon a robomi steel warrior, and then robomi is a five five with ward. So you just get quite a bit of stats if you're willing to wait a few turns. Off of Nicholas, and I think the what ward is pretty nice. To play this card in? I don't know. Any deck that wants just like a reasonably statted follower to play on turn four. All right. If you want to play it, I'd gladly play this in my take two deck. Right. I'd gladly play fighter in my take two deck. All right. So that doesn't mean much. <laughs> All right, well, we'll go on to the next one. So we got Captivating Conductor for the next one. Five play points. Select two followers in play. Deal X damage to the first follower and Y damage to the second follower. X equals the attack of the second and Y equals the attack of the first. So you make two creatures fight each other, your own choice. You can have your opponent's creatures fight each other. You can have your creatures fight each other. You can have your creature fight your opponent's creature. You can do whatever you want. You can play two puppets, Captivating Conductor, and have them kill each other if you want to. Exactly. Yeah. Um. This is a weird card. Like... There are going to be tons of situations where it's just not going to do what you want it to do, and then there are going to be other situations where it's double dance to death on one card. Yeah. It doesn't deal four to the face. Yeah. It won't deal four to the face. You're not wrong about that. And I think the, the ceiling for this is pretty high, and the floor for this is pretty high. Or pretty low. Um, it's either literally unplayable, or... Exactly what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's a two for one. Um, Baselius, Outworld Invader, 6 play point five six, and it doesn't get any stats when you evolve it, and I think that's the biggest knock against this card. And then it's Evolve, Black and Scripture, everything your opponent has. So that's pretty nice, the Black and Scripture effect. And I think you can set that up in Portal 2, because you have tons of little artifacts to throw in. But other than that, I don't know. It's pretty it's doing a weird thing i'm interested to see if this card actually makes the cut anywhere i don't really think it will paraclesis is a two play point two two this um, card's busted this card is nuts so two play point two two choose put either a guard form golem or a strike form golem into your hand guard ford golem is a ward with fanfare enhanced four gain plus one plus two so it's either a three three or a four five and then strike form golem has rush and then he becomes a 5-4 instead. So you're just getting strike two form. solid That's cards. Terrible. Yeah, strike form is actually just Hove. You're right. This is actually just power crypt Hove. Wait, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's an ambitious statement. I don't know. All I know is I'm very happy that side games it's is reprinting Tove. But at the same time, Tove requiring neutrals wasn't a downside. Yeah, it was not a downside. Let's be completely honest with ourselves. So I think we agree. Paraclesis, very good card. But yes. Artifact Spark, five play point rare. Destroy an artifact in your hand, or transform an artifact in your hand into an artifact spark. Deal four damage to the enemy leader. This can only be played when a targetable artifact is in your hand. So I can see this like being some sort of alternate win condition, I guess. But the thing is, all it does is it goes face. You can't actually use this to remove a creature, so why would you want to use this as an alternate win condition to something like a Sephira or something like that? I could see, like, like, because you have a bunch of mana a lot of the time as Portal. So you go, alright, this extra 2-1, instead I'll deal 4 damage to their face, making my Sephira that much easier to actually kill them. It's a good way to use your excess play points, that's for sure. It's got nice art, too. Yeah. 
Next one. That's I think it's hard to evaluate that one, I think. Solo Coco, little puppeteer, two play point two two. It's a fighter at the very worst. Fanfare, enhance five, transform an enemy follower into Lococo's teddy bear. And Lococo's teddy bear is what? It's a one three? Right? Yeah, that puts Lococo's teddy bear is one three, evolves into a three five. It reads, end of turn, put a, fall, a puppet into your opponent's hand. So you turn their whatever into a Coco's teddy bear, then you keep getting puppets. So it's pretty good. Okay, suicide. This is like a Lily. Lily enhanced at 6. This one enhances at 5. Gives them a slightly better body, but you also get some puppets for your troubles. It's not as cute as Lily. Yeah, but the teddy bear is pretty cute. Alright, so we got Silva, Ardent Sniper. 7 play point 6, 5. Accelerate 3. Put a follower that originally cost 3 play points or less from your hand into play. Give it Rush. Give your leader the following effect on each of your turns. Deal 1 damage to the enemy leader the first time an allied follower attacks. This effect lasts for the rest of the match. And then, alternatively, you can play a 7 play point 6, 5 Amber. I was planning on crafting 3 of this card day 1. But I just opened my third of it. Oh, nice, so. dude. Congrats. Yeah, I think this card is very strong. Oh, yeah. It's really strong in puppets as well because, like, puppets, you can just throw one out and attack without thinking and get that chip damage in. You don't now have to hold eight puppets in your hand the entire game until you play a Noah at the very end to try and kill them. Yeah, it just allows you to chip your opponent down over the course of the game. Very good card, I think. Once you play for board, much better. So let's talk about the last of the neutral cards, and then we get to go and play, play with some new cards. So we got Investigation. Two play points, draw a card, enhance six, draw three instead. Um, I don't not, think it's really it's, a risky play. Yeah, I don't think don't so either. You actually want to enhance this card outside yeah. of take two. I think drawing three cards for six isn't bad, but it's really not that great either. It's like spell, Spellbook Decryption, right? Spellbook Decryption is just six play points, draw three instead. This is like a slightly more yeah. flexible Spellbook Decryption. Lewain of the Bro Family. Um, put an Elzum of the Bro Family into their hand, and then Elzum puts another Bro Family into your hand. And then they're just all bros, and they do some pretty cool things. Right. Now, when I said that this is the gayest card in the expansion, Human Pyramid Attack, just look at it. It's got some stuff going on, for sure. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Right. Uh, they're holding a bit too low there in the Evolve <laughs> form. That's all I'm going to say. That's an interesting card. Um, I think this card is very good in Take 2. It's just so much stats. It's like a Kaiser that gives you some slightly different things instead of a Carrot. We have next is Rakam, Airship Pilot. 4 play point, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever this follower attacks an enemy follower, deal 3 damage to that follower before it can deal any in return. Um, so it's like the 5 play point, 4-4 four, four that neutral has. It's a silver card. It's an angel. I forget its name. Holy Angel I Ida. Kind of reminds me of that. Yeah. Um, that card's not, not nearly as cute, so it's trash. That card, sure. that card isn't doing anything too crazy. I don't expect Rakam to do anything too crazy. Genesis of Legend, count down three at the end of your turn. Give a random allied follower plus zero plus one in Bane. When is that useful? Bane is a pretty take relevant two. effect, right? But I don't know. It's I real good in take two. Maybe like, it's maybe it's good. Plus one in take two. Value trades are so important in that format. Yeah, you might be right. Maybe it's got some space somewhere. I think in constructive, it's a little weird though. So Catalina, Sky Guardian, 6 play point four four. Ward cannot receive more than 3 damage at a time. But when you evolve her, she becomes a 6-6, six, six, and that dies to 2 hits of 3. So I feel like the effect isn't that insanely good on it. Yeah, I don't think it's that. It's, it's Catalina will soak up 2 hits. A, it's a take 2 card. Yeah, better on evolved, you're right. Seraphic Blade, um, very good card, right? Yeah, two play this, points. Is, this is kind of a house. 
Yeah, two play points destroy an enemy follower amulet that costs two play points or less. Enhance six destroy any enemy follower amulet instead. It's just flexible. It just destroy deals with everything you wanted to deal with. It can even deal with amulets, which is up until now is something that's been very difficult to deal with. So I think this card is just going to, in some senses, define the format we're moving into. Yeah. See a lot of this card. Yeah. I think this card we're also going to be seeing a lot of, Lyria Azure Maiden. You play point one one. The next time damage is dealt to this follower, reduce that damage to zero. Fanfare, enhance eight, put a random neutral that costs at least seven play points from your deck into your hand, and then you recover seven play points. So this is just your two mana one one that has the ability to negate the first st source of damage it takes. But then in the late game, it can tutor your big bomb at the end game. So it's slightly better than just a two mana one one. What bomb are you really tutoring? Um, you're yes. tutoring at the moment. It's just Proto the bomb. Yeah. I mean, actually, I guess at ten mana you can play it, and yeah, you can play this plus Proto Bahamut. I think Liri is very good. We'll move on to the next one. Legendary Fighter. Um, uh -huh. this card's He's pretty, legend. His card's pretty I sweet. Love, I love the flavor of him. He's like the RPG hero that gets stronger over time. You know. Yeah, and like he definitely he literally one shots everybody. Yeah, I mean he's good. I think right. It's this is a very hard card to evaluate. I feel like this is one of the harder cards to evaluate. So two play point two two is never a bad stat line to start out with, but you have to work to get the effects off the other one to get his effect off. So is he actually ever going to be better than a fighter in most games? Probably not. But he All is right, a legendary he fighter. Actually, reads two play point two two ward. Yeah, you have He's to remove this guy. Answer. You have to remove this guy. I think this guy's pretty good. He puts your opponent into some sticky situations if they can't deal with the legendary fighter efficiently. Right. And then last card in the set is Proto Bahamut. Nine play point eight eight. Accelerate seven. Deal three damage to all followers. Deal one damage to the enemy leader. At the end of your turn, deal three damage to all other followers and one damage to the enemy leader if you actually have it on the field. So, he's a big board clear. He's explosion on an 8-8 body. Not bad. He also a pushes card. a little bit of chip damage. This card is also probably going to define part of the format we live in. I think the neutral fall the neutral cards are generally a good place to look as what are things going to look at look like rather. Yep. Yeah, and the art is pretty sick on that one. So overall, I think it's a pretty cool expansion we're moving into, right? I think so, definitely. Kind of concerned that the power level of a lot of cards seems 